Hi, I'm Dan, creator and founder of Gleanly. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new experiment and add your research to it. First, we start by clicking new experiment. We can add a title and this will give others an idea of what this experiment's about. But we have the summary to give a bit more information and that's also shown on the experiment card. Pick an experiment type that best reflects your research method. This helps people get a context of your experiment at a glance and in the future will add weightings to the evidence score. In the more detail we can give as much information as you wish. This is a useful place for the experiment design details, anything that gives your experiment more context to the viewer. I can add any other authors who I'm collaborating with. If I choose to lock my experiment, these people will still be able to edit and add to the experiment. Tags and custom filters help people find your experiment. At the experiment level, these tend to be context and organizational based. For example, platform and client would reflect what I'm testing, whereas team would be what team is undertaking the research or who I'm doing the research for. I can also link to any external resources such as prototypes, videos, etc. We'll be adding the ability to upload documents very soon. Now that's all done, we can come back and edit this at any time by clicking edit. Now let's add some research to this experiment. In Gleanly, we tend to add the facts and then synthesize these into insights and the insights into recommendations. There are four main ways to do that. The first is adding a fact manually. This is most useful for taking notes from an interview or research video. I like to take notes as quickly as possible and then tag and add detail when I come around to synthesize later. I know some people prefer to tag as they go. A good fact is usually a quote, an observation or statistic. But a fact should never be our opinion as the researcher. Save those for insights. If possible, link to the source of your fact. Good tagging will make this fact far more easy to find. Custom filters and facts tend to be context focused, a way to help the viewer understand who this fact came from or where the data was discovered. The second way of getting facts into Gleanly is to bulk upload via an Excel spreadsheet or CSV. Make sure your fact is the first column and you can put any extra information in the second column. If your top row is a title, then you can make sure it's excluded by clicking here. We're planning to add much more functionality and flexibility to bulk upload, so please let us know what you would like to see. The third way is our browser tool, which is just about to be released. This sits on the Chrome browser and will let you be able to select any text on any website and add it in just a couple of clicks. We also have the ability to create integrations, but we're looking to you, our customers, to help us decide which integrations will be most useful and why. As I said, a good fact is usually a quote, an observation or statistic. What we do want to avoid is loads of rubbish raw data that is fairly meaningless to anyone. Gleany is a hub to share knowledge. If you have a survey with mostly qualitative results, that's probably good to bring in as it is. But for more quantitative results, products like SurveyMonkey and other tools like that have great resources for being able to understand the results of a survey. A tool like Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics or Power BI are going to be much better at analysing vast quantities of data. As the name suggests, Gleanly is where you record what you've gleaned from those tools so everyone can benefit. Gleanly can also help you understand what those learnings actually mean. So now we have our facts, we can start synthesizing insights from the facts. Insights are our opinion on why the facts are the way they are. We can use them as a way of affinity mapping, grouping themes together. Sometimes we might decide a tag is the right way to do this. For instance, all of these are related to children's shoes. Other times we might want to use an insight to make a statement about what the facts mean. Click add insight and we can create a new one here. Keep the insight title as short and self-contained as possible. The aim is to create insights that are able to be understood by everybody. Therefore, an insight should make sense to someone viewing it outside the context of this experiment. We can add some extra detail if we want to expand on the thoughts above. Tags and filters for insights tend to be more theme or opportunity focused. 
Of course, sometimes we may be studying something that isn't relevant to the wide organization, for example, a prototype. I recommend tagging or creating a custom filter to make that clear. Gleamy allows you to connect several facts to a single insight and a single fact to several insights. This means we can think broadly about why something is. I like to synthesize with my team. So if one person has an idea about why something is and someone else might have a different opinion, that's great. And it allows us to think deeper about what we're learning. You can connect your facts to an insight both as evidence that proves or disproves. We can also find insights that already exist in other experiments. By connecting evidence from across our organisation, we can create a holistic view of what we know about a subject. Next, we have recommendations. These are our suggestions on what we should do about the insights. Just like before, we can have several insights supporting a single recommendation or several recommendations from one insight. Once again, we can say the insight is in support of a recommendation or against it. Recommendations are also global. So you can see here that this recommendation was already attached to this insight and has been brought into our experiment. We've provided more evidence for this recommendation, but because it's related to the website, it's not relevant to this one. I don't want to disconnect it as it's still a recommendation that is supported by this insight. Instead, I can hide it from this experiment. I can also hide insights if I want to use the facts to support an insight, but it isn't relevant to this experiment. If I want to see the cards I've hidden, this toggle allows me to show the hidden cards as translucent ghost cards. I'm going to add this one back to my experiment. We can use this multi-select tool to connect several cards together in one go. or to tag them in one go. It can be useful to search or filter and then select all and tag or connect all of those results. I can also connect backwards if I prefer and I can do this from anywhere. For example, I might spot an insight on the insights tab and think, I've got some evidence for that. Or perhaps someone comes to you and asks, should we do this? You can create a recommendation and find what insights we already have. I hope this has been useful. Please get in touch if you need any further help or would like to book an onboarding session. We're here to help you create a repository that scales and make knowledge usable.